morning. Uh, I'm a member of the Longshore Union Local 10 and also the Labor Action Committee to Free Olivia Bushman. So this is uh, Elder Circle, so my first kernel of wisdom to the youth here is that elders count in terms of decades and youth count in terms of years. So when I was a youth, in 1960, there was a horrendous massacre that took place in South Africa. It was called the Sharpeville Massacre. And that's something that was a light bulb that went off in my mind and, and got me involved in struggles for social justice. And I, I, I got involved with in the Civil Rights Movement, went down south, and, and worked with SNCC. Um, if you uh, remember what the Longshore Union is probably most well known for in terms of taking stands on social justice was a strike we had in 1984 against the ship that came in from South Africa because while the massacre at Sharpeville occurred in 1960, in the 1970s and the 1980s, there continued to be larger and larger demonstrations against the apartheid government. In 1984, we struck against the ship that came in from South Africa in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in South Africa. And Nelson Mandela, when he was freed from jail, did a world tour and spoke here at the Oakland Coliseum, said it was that act that reignited the anti-apartheid movement uh, in this country. And so we're very proud of that. Uh, Nelson Mandela was elected uh, in 1994. We were uh, revolutionaries who helped organize that strike action against the ship, wanted not only to bring down the government of apartheid, but also to fight for a workers' government, a socialist government in South Africa. That didn't happen. In 1994, the African National Congress and the South African Communist Party uh, became the powers uh, in, in the government in South Africa, along with COSATU, the trade union movement. They formed the tripartite government. Mandela said, if the present government does to you what the apartheid government did to you, then you must do to them what you did to the apartheid government. And the reason I'm saying is that is that just a couple months ago, this government in South Africa, the ANC government and the SACP government, massacred striking miners in Marikana. Okay, and it's the obligation of all of us to not only defend them, but to call for a, a workers' government in South Africa. Um, the ILWU is known for taking stands on racial justice in this country as well. Uh, we, uh, a problem, okay, one of the things that most of you aren't familiar with was uh, there was a black family that moved into a, a previously all white neighborhood in El Sobrante. The neighbors burnt crosses on the yard. Uh, broke windows, terrorized the family. We in the Longshore Union established armed defense guards, armed defense guards, to protect the family. And we let the racists know that we were intent on making sure this family lives in that neighborhood safely, like everybody else. And the racists stopped their actions. The family ended up living in, in that community uh, without harm to them. That's the way you fight back against police brutality. Community control isn't going to do it, and various other efforts uh, through the legislative bodies aren't going to do it. The problem is police brutality is part and parcel of the capitalist system. And until there's a revolution, a workers' revolution, that establishes an egalitarian society, a socialist society, you're always going to have police brutality. Uh, and, and to me, uh, that's the essential point. And I know I only have a few minutes here, so I just want to say we've taken strike actions for Mumia Abu Jamal. Thank God he's no longer on death row, but he's still in cage for the rest of his life until he's free. We took uh, stand shutting down all the ports for Oscar Brandt. 
and his family to seek justice for him. And finally, I want to say we took action for Troy Davis, who you may remember was the brother who was in prison unjustly for killing a police officer in Georgia. Okay, for any of you who have illusions about having a black president and how he's going to end police brutality, what happened with Troy Davis was, here's a man who the former head of the FBI said was framed up, Mandela said he was framed up, Archbishop Tutu said he was framed up, the European Parliament said he was framed up, and he was executed by the state of Georgia, and Obama and Holder, his attorney general, said nothing and did nothing. So it's up to us to arm ourselves, to defend ourselves against police brutality. Thank you. Thank you.